Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for another devotional as we uh, share uh, our coffee and the word this morning. I hope you have your coffee with you. Um, we, um, last yesterday, I wanted to follow up on something I was doing yesterday with a couple of passages of scripture that are found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Uh, these stories are back to back, and they are, they are stories about two individuals who uh, show us uh, contrasting uh, approaches to God, and they show us, I guess, I think they reflect some of the things that we think about God and how we think God thinks about us. So I wanted to revisit that in Luke chapter 5, if you have your Bible with you. But before we do that, let's uh, pray together. God, thank you for your word, and thank you that you bring us again together in this context so that we can, again, share uh, a version of who you are uh, from your word, uh, the truth, really, about who you are. You are, And as we see these reflected in your word, we, we ask God humbly that you would help them to be reflected in our lives, and may we uh, align ourselves with the truth that we find here. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, yesterday we talked about Simon Peter and um, the fact that he felt like God, Jesus, was uh, too small to uh, help him in his situation. His problems were too big, which made his Savior too small. And, and, and uh, in our understanding in church history, that's basically heresy. God, God is big enough to handle all of our, our problems. So uh, Luke's gospel goes on. Uh, after the, that passage, it ends in verse 11. Verse 12 starts uh, by introducing us to another individual who sees Jesus in a certain way. And I want us to kind of look at that and unpack, it, unpack that together this morning. Verse 12, Luke chapter 5, verse 12. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell. Uh, you remember the... Remember Simon Peter did the same thing. He falls at Jesus' feet. Well, here this man falls before Jesus. When he sees Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. And yet, the news about Jesus spread all the more so that, the, uh, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness, uh, sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. May the Lord bless that word to our hearts. So as we, we see this, this man, this, this leper stands in contrast to Simon Peter, who Simon Peter felt like Jesus was too small uh, to take care of his big problem. Um, the, uh, the, the leper stands in contrast. He, he, st he feels like Jesus is too big to care about his small problem. See, see the contrast? Um, Simon Peter didn't think that Jesus could. The leper knew that Jesus could. He just wasn't sure that he, he would. And so he says, if, and he, he doesn't say, if you can, that's not his concern. He says, if you are willing. So that's a, that's a big difference. Between, and, and sometimes when we have, you know, our prayer lists, our prayer requests for God, we go to God with a prayer request. The two big questions that we have, number one is, you know, can God? And the number, number two issue is, is will God? So can, is he able and then also, is he willing? And that's the contrast of these two, two people that are asking. Simon Peter says, are you able? Uh, this man says, are you, are you willing? And so he, he wrestles with this question. And I re the reason he's wrestling with this question is because he, is a, he has leprosy. And of all of the people of Israel in this time, uh, the, the most uh, irrelevant, the most parenthetical, the, the most despised people, of, of the Israelite community, the nation, and, and the towns of, of Israel were the lepers. Uh, lepers were unnoticeable people. They were untouchables, really. They called them the untouchables. Uh, they were unclean. Uh, they, they were forced in this uh, century, they were forced to carry signs around that said unclean. This is the word actually thing, this, this is my sign. It says, I'm unclean. And so they would carry this sign around, I'm unclean. 
and people could see the sign at a distance and they could avoid these these people. They just kind of walk on the other side of the street, that kind of thing. And so um, this this person growing, uh, 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 you know, living life with this sign around his neck, unclean, and all of the uns that come with that, untouchable, that, that kind of thing. Um, it's clear that this person um, would have concerns and questions about the God who made the universe, and why would he care about his issues? And so he says, uh, Lord, uh, if you are willing, and, and um, the, you know, the leper is basically saying, you know, is this God, is this God who is big enough, is he caring enough? Is he given to detail? Is, does he care about little, my little problems? And again, we all wrestle with that from time to time. We see ourselves as insignificant in, in the eyes of a God who has the universe to take care of. And so that's the question, is the God who is big enough, does he care? Um, one of the, um, the biggest stars in, the, in this universe that we know about is uh, a star called uh, Canis Majoris. Canis Majoris, which when you literally translate it, it means the big dog canine, uh, you know, Majoris, the big dog star. And so um, it's, it's uh, literally, uh, if, if uh, we're told that we can fit seven quadrillion Earths, planet Earths, uh, inside of Canis Majoris. We can, we can fit seven quadrillion Earths inside of Canis Majoris. And here's the amazing thing as we contemplate the nature of God and who God is. The God who made Canis Majoris also made the, the mosquitoes uh, cardiovascular system. The God who made the star that can fit seven quadrillion Earths in it also made the mosquitoes central nervous system. So this God who is massive and and just and un, it's un, I could not even describe how powerful this God is is also a God who is very given to detail. The Bible says he numbers the hairs on our heads. He watches the sparrows fall. Uh, he keeps our tears in a bottle. And this is the kind of God that, that we serve. Uh, we see things through telescopes and through microscopes that testify to the fact that we serve a big God who is not only big enough and able, he is also given enough to detail to care about us and our situations. There's a wonderful song as Jesus, as we see the, the end of this story, as Jesus um, reaches out his hand and he touches, he touches this untouchable person. And he says, he assures this person in the same assurance, to, assuring tone that he talks to us this morning. He says, I am willing. And whatever you're going through, whatever frustrations you have, hear those words as his word to you. I am willing. And there's this wonderful song that, uh, uh, this is, I don't know if you know if it's around anymore, but um, the song goes like this. Of all the plans at his command, he chose to die for me. How could this one disown his only son to set me free? To trade the stars for broken hearts and pain and misery. Of all the places he could be, he chose to live in me. That song has hooked me. I memorized those words years ago. This is, this is years old. But that concept has hooked me to the point that says, yes, he is a vast and big God, but also, yes, he cares for me. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Father, for your word that testifies that you are not only big enough to handle our problems, you care enough and are given to detail enough to come into our situations, to invade our lives, and to help us uh, search out answers to the, thing, to the things to which we struggle every day. We pray your grace would come upon us. We lay our troubles down. We lay our sufferings down. We lay our problems down. At your throne of grace, 
and we cast our cares, as the, the Apostle Peter says to us, we cast our cares upon you because you care about us. And bless us now as we do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a good morning and a great day, Chapel Hill. We'll see you soon.